Welcome back to Southern Haunts, and thanks for listening to this week's episode. I want to start off this episode with a shout out to Hugh. Hugh is my newest patron over on Patreon. Thanks for supporting the show, Hugh. Your monthly donation helps me to grow the show and keep bringing y'all spooky stories. If you want to be like you and hear your name on the show, get ad-free episodes and bonus episodes, head over to patreon.com slash southern haunts podcast. This episode is being offered on both my podcast feed and my YouTube channel. So if you would like a different Southern Haunts experience, be sure to head over to my YouTube channel linked in the show notes below. Subscribe. If you found me already and are watching this on YouTube, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the show. Now, let's get started. When I talk about vampires terrorizing the South, I'm sure your mind goes straight to New Orleans. But I'm going to tell you an urban legend that claims a group of bloodthirsty nightwalkers roam the streets of the Peach State, specifically a famous nightclub in Atlanta, hiding in the shadows, just waiting for their next meal. I'm Ashley McLaughlin, and I'm going to tell you a scary story. This is Southern Haunts. According to their website, the Masquerade Nightclub in Atlanta is, quote, one of the most unique designed and diversely programmed live music venues in the country. The Masquerade features three indoor venues appropriately named Heaven, Hell, and purgatory. The building that now houses the Masquerade Nightclub was once known as the Dupree Excelsior Mill. Most believe that the building dates back to sometime around 1890 and was built by the Dupree Manufacturing Company. The mill was expanded after the Depression, but was again reduced after the Second World War, when demand declined, and by the 1960s there was no need for Excelsior at all. The mill was then transformed into a storage facility and by 1977 was shut down completely. In 1989, the building reopened as a music venue and soon became home to several ghosts and a few vampires. The Masquerade nightclub has everything from a history of freak accidents to reports of disembodied screams to an unexplained fire Oh, and the so-called tall man who lurks in the hallways of the building at night. The staff believes this man messes with the venue's amplifiers every evening. There have been countless stories of hauntings to come out of this nightclub in Atlanta. According to local legend, the masquerade has been wildly haunted for decades, with hauntings pretty much starting after an unexplained fire, followed by a spat of several horrible tuberculosis outbreaks which plagued the old Dupree Excelsior Mill. These outbreaks claim the lives of countless men who worked inside the mill, whose spirits have been said to still remain within its walls. Reports of the venue staff hearing footsteps coming from identified sources, as well as cold spots all throughout the building, have fueled the legend of these hauntings over the years. There have even been reports of blood-curdling screams coming from the back of the stairs, most often happening when there is no one around but the staff. It's believed that the screams are coming from a young woman who reportedly died in a freak accident inside the nightclub. Historically, the Masquerade nightclub has been a very visible part of Atlanta's live music scene, but reports of freak accidents occurring on the property throughout the years has created some concern among patrons and performers. And, to put the cherry on the paranormal Sunday, this nightclub is also rumored to be the home of an actual vampire, and possibly an entire clan of vampires. This particular urban legend surrounding the masquerade in Atlanta has helped make the club infamous for years now, and is part of the venue's draw for many patrons. Side note, I looked up what to call a group of vampires. I thought it was a coven, but apparently it's not. My search results produced clan, brood, and pack. Anyway, just thought that was interesting. 
If you know what the proper term for a group of vampires is, I would love to know. Reports of the club being the hunting ground for a pack of sexy vampires started when a club goer reported seeing someone that looked possibly like a vampire in a rock music venue up in the rafters of the club. The nightclub patron claimed the nocturnal bee suddenly disappeared when they looked away and looked back. Like all urban legends, this person told that person and now vampires live in the masquerade nightclub. Most locals, however, believe that this rumor has been spread to promote business because vampires are sexy, right? Who doesn't want to get their blood sucked while jamming to the Foo Fighters? But I think you have a higher chance of encountering more of a Walmart Robert Pattinson than a real vampire at this nightclub. But in 2001, a mannequin was mysteriously placed at the top of the stairs of the heaven portion of the venue before the stairs collapsed. The mannequin was said to be a very old vampire that had taken on a statue-like form. Visitors to the nightclub claim this mannequin did some pretty creepy stuff. Some reported that its vibrant lavender-colored eyes would open and close on their own. Its arms were said to be crossed over the chest at some point, and then on the hips at another. When the stairs collapsed, the mannequin was said to be placed in storage. No one knows what happened to it after that, or if it actually was a mannequin. Many still believe that vampires live within the crumbling remains of this old building. Nobody knows for sure. It might be just another urban legend, or another piece of southern vampire lore. Even so, would you be brave enough to find out? Thanks for listening to Southern Haunts Podcast and tuning in for this episode. If you're looking for more Southern Haunts, you can always find that over at patreon.com slash southernhauntspodcast. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. That way you know exactly when new episodes drop every week. And be sure to send in a screenshot if you leave me a review. And I'll send you some Southern Haunts stickers. You can also send your paranormal encounter story to southernhauntspodcast at gmail.com. I hope you liked this video version of the episode. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week.